another heavy box to open. Let's see what's in it. Here we go, guys. Today we're gonna review a lead time battery. Let's get it open. Lie time, lead time. Not sure how you say it. on the ground and pull it out. Oh, it's got a handle. Perfect. Oh yeah. Hey guys, Mike Build. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be reviewing a lead time battery. This particular battery is a 230 amp hour 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. It's rated at 200 amps continuous discharge, 600 amps for five seconds. It has low temperature cutoff. They also rate it to be used for trolling motors, which is interesting. I haven't seen that in a battery yet. So what I assume is Maybe the circuitry and the BMS and all that's very robust to be able to handle a large current draw like that. They rate it at 4,000 charge and discharge cycles at 100% depth of discharge. So if you discharge it shallower than that, which I believe most people probably will, you'll get even more life cycles. So that's awesome. They give you a five-year warranty right out of the box. This particular battery, it's very large. It has a different terminal design than we've seen before. And it looks like it weighs almost 46 pounds. It also does have these carry handles on here, which I really like to see in a heavier battery to make it easier to move around. Lead time apparently is one of the better selling lithium iron phosphate batteries on the market. So I am very excited to test this one. And it's also a big capacity one. So that's super awesome to see. There's not much more to say about it, you guys. We're going to fully charge the battery. We're going to fully discharge the battery to get a capacity rating out of it. Then we're going to put it on a max amp draw test to see how many amps we can get out of the battery because they do rate it at 200 continuous and 600 peak. And at the bare minimum, we're going to make sure it can at least do 200 amps continuously without any issues, without, you know, getting hot or nothing crazy. After all that, we're going to take the battery apart. We're going to take a look at the cells they use, take a look at the BMS, kind of judge the overall build quality based on the other batteries we've seen on the market and kind of give our final thoughts from there. You also get a warranty card and they do give you a five year warranty. So that's pretty awesome. A couple things to note there. You get this little book, which kind of kind of tells you some of the other products and their certificates and all that stuff. Then you get the actual manual itself. Some good information in here if you want to skim through that. It tells you how to wire these up in series and parallel and all that good stuff. It gives you some more specs in here. And they also give you some stickers, so that's kind of cool. As well as your standard terminal set M8 bolts with protective caps. So yeah guys, that's kind of it for the unboxing. We're going to go ahead and get this thing fully charged so we can start our capacity test. I'm going to use my little 6 amp charger so it's going to take a long time to fully charge this, but let's get to it. We have our capacity tester rig set up. So as usual, we use the Harbor Freight Jupiter Pure Sine Wave Inverter as our load. We have our current shunt right here that I reset to 230 amp hours. And I also put the total amp hours back to zero. The battery is fully charged. We're gonna put a base load of 0.2 C. So the way you find that is take this number here and divide that by five. And that's how many amps we're gonna put on the battery side of things to give us our discharge test load, which is gonna be about 40 something amps. And just like always, we're gonna be using our charge verter as the load to charge my 48 volt system. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the load started, get the base, get the amperage where we want it. And we're gonna let this run until the battery runs out of energy. And there we go, guys, we got a 45.3 amp load, which is about 0.2 C. So we're gonna let this run all the way till the battery dies or until the inverter shuts off. And we're gonna see the capacity, final capacity is gonna be right here. If I have any issues, I will stop the test and I'll let you guys know. Hopefully we get full capacity. If we get at least 230, we'll be good. As we just finished the capacity test, as y'all can see, we got 236 amp hours. So the battery passed, did pretty good. The voltage stayed very consistent the whole test, all the way up until the end. So now I'm gonna fully charge the battery again, and then we're gonna start doing a full amp draw test to see how many amps we can pull out of the battery. All right, guys, it is time to do the max power test on this lie time battery. They claim it will do 200 amps continuous, so we're gonna put a 200 amp load on this, just kinda see how the battery does, and then we're gonna up the load as high as I can get it, and just kinda see what happens, see how many more amps above 200 we can get. We're gonna be using this EG4 charge verter as the load. I do have the power meter hooked up, it's all zeroed out, so I'm gonna re-zero it out, make sure it's all good to go. I'm probably gonna start slow, like 150 amps, and we're gonna go straight up to 200, and a little bit past that, and just kinda see how the battery does. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the inverter on. Hopefully y'all can see this okay. There goes the charge verter kicking on. 
There's 101 amps, pretty easy. We're not even below 13 volts yet. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn it up some more. 100 amps should be nothing for this thing. All right, I made an adjustment on the charge verter. Let's see what we can get up to now. All right, we're at 170 amps. That's 2,000 watts, over 2,000 watts of power. 170 amps, holding strong. Voltage dipped it down a little bit, but that's fine. All right, let's crank it up a little more. Making sure nothing's hot and everything feels good. There it is, that's 205 amps, 2,500 watts of power. That's absolutely awesome to see. The battery is performing very well, and we're actually pulling a little bit over what it's rated for, and the battery is performing flawlessly. I'm gonna attempt to turn the power up a little bit more, but I think my charger is almost maxed out, so I might try to go find a heater or something. Also, the inverter is only rated for 3,000 watts, so I'm not gonna be able to get much more than that. But so far, so good. This thing is performing as expected. No weird surprises. Crazy, 2,500 watts, nuts, out of one battery. Dang, we are at 232 amps, 233 as the voltage starts to drop a little bit. We're still holding above 12 volts, so that's what I like to see on a low test. I don't ever want the voltage to dip super low. Like if you're in like low 11s, high 10s on a low test, and that means your battery is not providing the amps, it could be, and it could be bad for what your load is demanding. So we're pulling almost 3,000 watts out of this battery. I'm gonna let this run, just see what it does, see if anything goes wrong. The battery is doing awesome. This is unfortunately the most I'm gonna be able to get out of it. So if you, oh, there it went. We did hit the overcurrent protection. As you can see, it's at one volt. So the battery did shut itself down. It's a good safety feature to see actually working. A lot of the other batteries I've been testing have not shut themselves off, but this one did. So that's good to see. But as y'all saw, it pulled over 230 amps for about two or three minutes, no problem. Let's see how long it takes for it to kick back on. Okay, there it went, it just kicked back on. So we're back up to voltage. Now we're gonna open this thing up and look at the insides, look at the build quality, and also take a good look at the BMS and all that good stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and crack this thing open. But up to this point, this thing has been awesome. So good job, light time. But at any battery I've ever taken apart, this one was by far the hardest to get the lid off. And the main reason for that is because this battery is actually rated to be waterproof. So they put a lot of glue and it also has like a double layer holding it on. So I'll show you guys what I mean when I get it apart. But I've been prying at this, trying my best not to destroy it. And I mean, I nicked it a few times, but overall, I don't want to destroy this thing trying to get it open for a video because I do want to use it. So I did end up getting it apart. And I didn't nick anything on the inside, so that's good. Familiar battery smell, they all have that weird smell. But if you kind of look right here, there's like two layers of plastic. It attaches like this with glue on both sides. So that's what gives this thing its water tightness. And you can see they used a ton of adhesive on this thing. So this is the first time seeing this thing. I figured the cells are gonna be in this orientation given the length of the battery. Looks like we have laser welded terminals. Good to see that. Balance wires look okay. That's our high low temp sensor right there. We're gonna test the low temp cutoff on this thing. If you look, well, it's hard to tell, but in this sheathing, which is really nice to see this because this protects the wires from heat and all that stuff, but I can feel that there's many conductors on the negative side. And it feels like there's two, maybe six or four gauge conductors inside this sheathing. And that goes right here. And then this is the negative connection right here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this whole assembly out. The lugs actually connecting to the outside of the battery. These seem like they're very well made. They even put some goop on there, I guess, to help secure the bolt that holds those on. And there's the positive side, it looks really good. I'm gonna go ahead and wrench this thing out of here. Here's what the inside of the box looks like for anyone who's curious, just a basic box, nothing crazy there. And here's the part everybody wants to see. Okay guys, first let's take a look at the BMS. I'll give you guys a real close up look at it. It's got some extra plugs up here, so I wonder what those guys are for. If you guys know, let me know in the comments. And also this has a power wire coming off into the BMS along with its balance wires. Normally on a BMS you only see negative wires going into it and then your balance wires. So interesting to see that. And that's about as much as I can see when it comes to the model, because I don't want to wrench this heat sink off and mess something up. So if anyone can decipher that, let me know. But overall, this is kind of what you'd expect to see in a battery like this because it's rated for trolling motors. It's got to be a very beefy BMS in order to handle the current. Even though there are a lot of batteries out on the market that say they can handle whatever their output is continuous, some of them cannot. And it's not necessarily because the cells can't handle it, it's because they use a cheap BMS. So it is nice to see a really nice BMS that is 
part of the reason you're paying for the plus model of this particular battery. Which to me is not a big deal, but I know some people would rather see this all sheathed up. The connections to the actual bus bars look really well secured. They even put a dab of silicone to help keep the bolt from coming out. And, and then it also has a little bit of heat shrink here. Between the cells, it's hard to see, but there's actually like a matte material. So that keeps the cells insulated between each other in case the casing were to rub. On the corners, they put these hard plastic bits to keep the corners from getting squished. And the whole pack looks like it's being compressed by this green like plastic stuff. And if you look on the back, there's three of them. So that should be plenty of compression. None of the cells look puffed or swollen even after we did a hard test with them. That all looks good. And you can see all the multi-strand conductors coming off the negative side going into the BMS. The BMS is attached. It looks like it's just zip tied. If you look right here, zip tie right there. So once again, some people might complain about that, but as long as it works, personally, I don't really mind. I guess they could have done a better job, but at the same time, as long as it works. And then there is also a insulator between the battery itself and the BMS. That way, if this puts out any heat, it's not gonna affect the cells at all. But that's it. The overall pack quality is okay. I don't really see anything crazy that sticks out to me that's horrible. Let me know what you guys think. Now I'm gonna pull the temp sensor off. We're gonna try to put it in some freezing water and see if we can get the low temp cutoff to work. This also has low temp discharge. So if you're using the battery, it will also cut off below a certain temperature as well, but it's like zero degrees Fahrenheit. It's really, really cold. All right, so what I'm gonna do is connect the charger to the battery and the light right here will turn red. That means that there's current flowing into the battery. Now I'm gonna take the temp sensor and stick it in this ice bath and see if the BMS turns off charging. Oh, there it went, guys. It just shut off charging, so I'm gonna take the temp sensor back out. Oop, warm it back up and see how long it takes for it to turn the BMS back on. Oh, there it went. Okay, so now we're charging again. So the low temp cutoff does in fact work. It's good to see that. I would like to have seen a little bit of foam right here because this does sit on the directly on the case of the battery. It does have this plastic right here, but I would have liked to see a little bit of foam. Like I said, that maybe mount the BMS a little bit better. It's really the only complaints I have about it. But yeah, that's really it guys. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this thing back in the case and we'll kind of give our final thoughts on it. I think that's gonna wrap it up for this video. As you guys saw, the battery did very well in the capacity test. It did very well on the amp draw test and I was very happy to see that the BMS actually had a overcurrent protection feature that worked. The BMS itself is very robust. It's very large. I don't think you'd have any issues pulling 200 plus amps out of this thing for an extended amount of time. If you guys are using this battery or any other lead time batteries, let me know what kind of luck you guys are having with it in the description. And let me know what else you guys wanna see me do with this battery. It's going to go into service with my other 12 volt batteries. And in one year from now, I wanna recapacity test this thing and just see how the capacity is holding up over time. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching and I will catch you all in the next one.